Welcome. Today we're going to be talking um, about exploring your passion. This is the second in our Lunch and Learn series where we invite you to come in to either here on South Lake or into the conference room on our Leesburg campus and do a quick 15 or 20 minute talk about one of our career topics. Today it's exploring your passion as it relates to your career. My name is Ann Alcorn. I'm the career advisor here on the South Lake campus. And we also have Carice, who is the career advisor on the Leesburg campus. Each of us would be able to help you with your career exploration, finding a major, finding a career that works for you, and of course incorporating something you're passionate about into your career. So I figured we would start today with talking about what is passion as it relates to your career. There's a lot of talk about that. It's kind of the in thing to do to find your passion. But a lot of people don't really know what their passion is or they feel like if they don't have this burning desire, um, maybe they don't have any passion. But that's not necessarily true. I know what I thought I thought it was, but I looked it up um, on dictionary.com to make sure we were all on the same page. And I came up with this um, definition which says passion is an intense desire or enthusiasm for something. So that's about what I was thinking it is. It's when you're really interested in something, uh, you're super enthusiastic, you want to talk about it all the time or be doing the activity or learning about it or teaching others about it. Um, so I feel like that's a really good definition. But as I was looking at it, I found that there was another definition that I liked even a little bit better. It took it to that next level. Um, to define it beyond something you're interested in. And that said, a passion is something you are willing to sacrifice for. So to me, that made a lot of sense. Um, people might say they have a passion for cookies and cream ice cream, but are they willing to sacrifice something for that? I don't know. But if we're going to talk about someone who has a passion for running or marathon races, um, they are willing to sacrifice for that. They're willing to sacrifice time that it takes. It takes hours and hours to prepare for a um, marathon that's going to end up taking you two, four, five hours to finish. It's also going to sacrifice your body. It physically hurts to prepare for a marathon and while you're in that marathon. So you are sacrificing. This is the same with anything that you're going to dedicate a lot of your time to. You're going to be sacrificing time away from something else. So I feel like that's a good way to think about if there really is something that you're passionate about. Um, are you willing to sacrifice something else for that passion? Another thing that you could use as kind of a marker for something you're passionate about is think about what captivates you. What's something that you're always thinking about that you know, if you see an article um, on this topic, you're immediately going to read it. If somebody brings it up in a conversation, you're going to jump right in and contribute to it. If there's a way that you can learn more about it, a class, a community project, you're going to get into that. And then more importantly, think about why. Why does that captivate you? Why are you passionate about that topic? What about that topic, activity, um, organization, appeals to you, that makes you driven to learn more about it, that makes you want to become an expert in it, that makes you willing to sacrifice your time. Because all of these questions are going to let you dig in a little more to, again, define the difference between if this is an interest of yours or a passion of yours. Is it something you're going to want to pursue? Um, Another thing that we can talk about are the skills that you already have. This isn't really going to define your passion, but it's going to kind of help you um, put your passion to work. Is your passion going to work with some skills you already have? So what are some skills you already have? Make a nice list of those. And then we can go in and kind of um, qualify them with what are some skills you have that you're proud of? What are some skills that you would like people to know that you have, that you think you're really good at? Mark those as skills that you're proud of. That's probably going to lead you towards um, something that you really care about. What are some skills you have that you want to improve? So you might not be super proud of them yet, but you want to learn more. You want to get better at video editing, or you want to get better at um, your artistry, or that computer program that you're learning. 
So make a note of those when you have your list of skills that you already have. Um, what are some skills that you have that are marketable? Again, we're talking about passion as it relates to your career, and marketable skills are really important to have when you've discovered what career you want. Just be careful when you're doing this, though, that you're not only focused on technical skills. Many of the things recruiters are telling us more and more that are most important of a marketable skill right now are communication skills, um, the ability to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, to deliver customer service, um, those types of skills that you may not think are super marketable, but those soft skills are very important. If you're not sure if they're marketable, that's when it would be a good time to talk to me or Carice um, and look at some job descriptions and see if they are indeed marketable. And then the third thing I would want you to think about with your skills is what skills you, that you have that you don't really enjoy that much or you don't want to continue. So these are skills that it may have been developed because that's what you've been doing. Um, this, a good example of this, and I've seen this with students, is you know, maybe they're the oldest in a family, a large family, so they've always cared for their younger siblings. And then when they got to middle school and needed some money, they figured, oh, I'll babysit. I'm really good with kids. People are constantly telling them they're really good with kids. So it is a skill that you might have, but is it something that you want to continue doing? Just because you're good with kids doesn't mean that you have to be an elementary school teacher. So think about some skills you might have, or you might be really good on the computer, but it's not something that you want to, you don't want to be an engineer or a computer scientist. Make note of that. We'll think about it as one that you don't really want to pursue, but it might end up that it does work well with your career down the road. But we're just going to put it on the side so that's not what we're focusing on when we're picking um, what major you might want or which careers you might want to explore. These next ones are going to be a few deep questions, but we are talking about your passion. So it's not something that you are going to sit here and in the next two or three minutes come up with these answers, but it's something you're going to want to think about. Again, when you're thinking, what's something I'm passionate about? What's something I really want to dedicate a lot of time to that I'm willing to um, sacrifice time doing something else to pursue? So you want to ask, ask yourself, what do I want to be known for? This also goes into your personal brand, which is really important right now. Um, not only on social media and LinkedIn and things like that, but your personal brand as you as a human interacting one-on-one -on -one with people or as a presenter. What do you want to be known for? Whom do you want to serve? Um, I know this one goes a little bit deeper even, and you might be thinking, what do you mean? I'm not necessarily going to be a server or in that serving um, position, but the fact is everyone serves someone. The, um, you know, Bill Gates serves the uh, customers, he serves his stockholders, he serves his employees to a certain extent. The, um, any position you're in, however high or low you may be in an organization, you're serving someone. Um, many times it's our customers, but think about that. Not only who do you want to serve, but what population um, is, are the hungry really important to you, or school children, or fellow employees, students? Think about that. Also ask yourself why when you're talking about these questions. Why do you want to serve that certain population? Why do you want to be known for a specific skill set or personality trait? And again, that's going to help you learn a little bit more about yourself. Um, and then what sort of life do you want? This one seems like a really big one, but it really is getting to the heart of when you pick this occupation, what kind of hours do you want to work? Um, what environment do you want to be working in? Do you want to work outside? Do you want to work inside? Do you want to work with your hands or would you prefer to be sitting at a desk all day? Do you want to work in a big team or would you rather work one-on-one um, -on -one with someone developing relationships? All of these questions um, are good things to think about because that is going to influence your satisfaction with your job one day. And so it's good to think about them now. And all these are very lofty questions that I've said here. If you can find a job that fits everything that you've talked about, you're going to be really great. Um, that may not happen, but we can see if we can, you know, 
fill them in so that you're um, hitting as many of the marks as you want as possible as you're developing this career plan, what major you're going to be, what career you might pick. Um, so that was all the hard parts of this career exploration. That's all your hard work. You're digging in deep, thinking about what you want out of life, what you enjoy doing, something you're passionate about. But we also have some um, fun assessments that you can take. These take a little bit of the pressure off of you because you're just answering questions. You're not assessing yourself specifically. The assessment is asking you the right questions and you're coming up with the answers that they can plug in and give you some assistance when you're choosing a career. It's not necessarily going to find, um, be able to pick out your passion necessarily, but it's going to give you some ideas for some careers that might work. There's four different mini assessments within the My Plan. There's the personality assessment that is going to assess your personality, give you a four letter type for your personality. There's an interest inventory. This is based on the theory by John Holland that the closer your interests align with your um, career, the happier and more productive you're going to be and more successful, which makes sense to me. And then skills assessment. Again, this one is a little more straightforward. It's going to give you a list of skills and you're going to say how well or not that great you are at performing these skills. And then values. This one is talking about kind of that last question that I had. You know, do you want to work where you have a lot of creativity? Do you, it's going to talk about your work environment. It's going to talk about the type of social um, structure you might want in your job. All of these, each one takes maybe 15 minutes. They can be taken one at a time or all at once. You can start just by going to our website here, the LSSC myplan.com and click that you want to create an account. When you get to the point in the registration where it asks for a license code, you're going to want to put this in. Type that in exactly like that and it's going to allow you to take all four of these assessments for free. If for some reason it says the code is invalid or it's trying to charge you, give us a call at the Career Center and we will help you um, so that you can get in there and take them for free. Once you've taken the assessments, it's got a really great little feature called Career Match. And so for each one of these, once you get in there, you can click on the Career Match button and it's going to give you a long list of careers that people with similar personalities, interests, skills, and values to you have been successful and happy in. It's a really great resource with this list and what's even more fun about it is you can change the level of education that you want. So you can put in high school, you can put in two year school, four year school, five years or more um, for the professional and graduate school. And it changes the recommended career matches based on how much education you put in. I recommend looking at all of the levels of education even if you're a hundred percent certain that you're not going to grad school, it's good to see all of your options early because you don't know what might come up down the road. Maybe you're going to get a scholarship to go to grad or professional school and you might change your mind if that happens. So look at all your options. What's really great also on this list is you can click through them. When you click through the list, it will show you some, an overview of the occupation, what a median salary might be for that occupation, the level of ed education typically needed to start out in that occupation. It really is a great resource and I've met with many students as we're reviewing this who found job titles that they didn't even know existed. So it's great for that exploration piece. Even if you think you know what you want to be or what you want to do, it's a really great place to just clarify that. Make sure you've um, hit all the high points, that you've checked everything out, and to go from there. Once you complete it, Carice and I are both very willing to meet with you to go over it in depth, really examine what those personality and interests mean, um, and get a little, dig a little deeper, come up with an exploration plan for you personally, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I also, my last little tip is when you take these assessments, make sure you're very relaxed. 
It's not when you're feeling a lot of stress or pressure, you're studying for a test, or you've got a final tomorrow. It should be taken so that you can answer truthfully and honestly with what your preference is, because it's going to be asking what you prefer in most of the cases. So please don't do it when you're stressed out or short on time, because it's going to give you um, typically invalid results in that case. Any questions? <laughs> um, so we're almost to the end here. I'm going to leave you with a few action steps that'll help you with this exploration, maybe help you uncover your passion if you're not sure about that. Um, the first one is conducting research. So that's going to be doing the My Plan, clicking through those career matches. We also have some really great resources on the Career Services website that um, will let you examine some careers even further and some majors. Find out what you can do with the psychology major, what you can do with the biology major. Um, there's one on our site called the Occupational Outlook Handbook. It's hosted by the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. It is great. It's one of the best resources out there. Not only does it tell you more about the job, some similar jobs, if you're like, ooh, that one sounds pretty good, but I don't know if I want that much education, but it also tells you the growth potential. So how many accountants are we going to be hiring in the United States in the next 10 years? What percent growth are we seeing there? That's really good for you to know because that's looking for job security. When you get done with this degree, are you going to be able to get hired? Are they going to be hiring for that? So that's a really good resource. Um, I definitely recommend that you visit. Um, information interviews. These are great opportunities to just find somebody who's doing a job that you think you might like or that is similar to what you might like and ask if they've got 15 or 30 minutes that they would either talk to you on the phone or in person and tell you about what their day is typically like, how they got into the business, how they've grown through their career. I can definitely help you with this, Carice and I. I think we have some resources on our website for some sample questions that you might want to ask. Um, but this is a really great way to make connections in the field that you're interested and get some honest um, feedback from somebody who's kind of in the trenches doing the job you're considering. Job shadowing is something similar, and these opportunities often pop up after you do an information interview. Um, it's where you go in and you actually kind of shadow someone for either half a day, a day, a week. You're not doing the work, so it's not an internship, but you're in there, you're seeing what the corporate environment's like, you're seeing is this person sitting at a desk all day by themselves or are they going out to meetings, um, traveling to different clients outside of the area? Are they in a big team environment or are they mostly singular by themselves? So it, those are really good things to learn. Plus, as far as the corporate environment goes, you're going to learn, is everybody look happy here? Is this a place I would feel comfortable? We can help you set these up in career services. We are um, working with many employers that are posting jobs on our job board to get some job shadowing experiences going. So if you're interested in a specific company or occupation, definitely follow up with us and we can see if we can connect you. And then volunteering. Volunteering is one of my favorite things. Um, it's good for you as a human being to get out there in your community, to volunteer your time. It's good for your resume because it shows future employers that you care about something beyond yourself. You want to give back to your community. You're interested in kind of working on a team. It also is good because if you don't have any job experience on your resume, at least this shows, you know, I showed up for a certain set number of hours every week. I was on time. I was respectful. You now have a volunteer supervisor who's willing to speak on your behalf and be a reference. So it's great that way. But when we're talking about passion, I really love it because maybe your passion is dogs and cats. You love dogs and cats. You would do anything for dogs and cats. So, but you think there's no job I can get that has to do with dogs and cats. Maybe you volunteer at the Humane Society because it is a passion of yours whether you can get a job that way or not. Um, and while you're volunteering, the person that you're volunteering with says that they work in um, you know, marketing at Disney. Now 
you know that this other person who's doing a kind of cool job has a similar passion to you in that they both, you both care about dogs and cats. So your passion has led you to someone who probably has common interests as you. You can talk to them. You can have these informational interviews, be chatting about what their job is like. You can tell them about you and your passions, what you're doing in school. Now you're making connections. You're finding people who are like-minded and that might lead you to a career that you're going to find satisfying because you know you have one thing in common already. So the more people you meet out there, the more you're going to learn about different careers and maybe find the perfect career for you that will suit your passion. So volunteering is um, just a fantastic thing as far as I'm concerned. Um, and then the last thing is not really an action step other than be brave because um, it's hard. You're trying to choose a career, especially if you're at the beginning of your college career. There's anything. You could do anything and everything. And how do you narrow that down? How do you find what everybody's going to ask you, you know, your major or what the perfect career for you is? It's, it's hard work and it's a little scary. So I'm just going to encourage you to be brave. Go out there. Um, do some of this exploring. Put your neck out there a little bit to find people who are doing the types of things that you're interested. Like I said, we in the Career Development Services are more than happy to help you kind of take the edge off of that. We can help you get a connection with someone. We can coach you in how you might approach people to make it a little less scary. Um, so be brave, but know that we're here to help you with that. Um, as you're going through that exploration process, trying to find that passion that you've got. Um, so that was it for me. So I just want to leave you with, if you've got any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer those. I also have our contact information. We are on all three campuses. Carice is at our Leesburg campus and the Student Services Building. I'm here in Building 2, Room 153. Carice also goes out to Sumter Center on Wednesdays. You can schedule appointments on any of the campuses or via phone or Skype through Starfish or by calling our main office number where Ms. Beate will answer the line for you. And then this is my email address um, in case you have something very specific about this particular presentation. But if there's no questions, thank you so much for coming and good luck.